This is Money Guide with Mary Stirk from Stirk Financial Services. Now, here's Mary Stirk. Welcome to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. And today's topic is get your retirement ducks in a row. You know, I, I laughingly see things out on the internet or on Facebook that says, I don't have a I don't have ducks. I don't even have a row. I've got squirrels and they're having a riot. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably feel that way about their retirement. But today, Kelsey Banky and I are going to talk a little bit about getting your retirement ducks in a row and uh, what are some of the main points that I think are important to, to consider when you're, when you're doing that. All right. We're going to talk about five ducks today. <laughs> okay, we're going to line up five ducks in your row. The first one, when you think about retirement, this is the first duck to put in your row, is emotional readiness. All right. So um, retirement, primarily, when you talk to a financial person, it's all about graphs and charts and numbers. And those are all well and good, and they're definitely necessary. But if you don't take some time and figure out how you are going to emotionally prepare yourself for retirement and think about what positive changes retirement can bring in your life, how you're going to spend your time and things like that, then retirement is not probably going to be what it's all cracked up to be. You're not going to have all the answers to all those questions necessarily before you pull the trigger, but you need to put some thought into it of how do you want to spend your time. Um, I always love, 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 love visiting with clients who have retired within that two years after retirement because what they tell us that they think that they're going to do in retirement and then what actually happens once they have all of that time not working, it's really fascinating to see what people end up doing and what they come up with, how they're going to spend their all their free time now. So right. um, very, lot, very fun. A lot of people <laughs> say, I don't know how I ever had time to work. <laughs> exactly. You fill your time with, you know, with whatever and it's just fascinating whether it's volunteering or finding new volunteer opportunities or finding a second career you didn't know that you wanted but you absolutely love now. It's it's very, very interesting. But give some thought to that and give some thought to what are you going to do when you no longer go to your current um, employer on a daily basis um, just so that you start to feel like, you know, okay, this is, this is something that I want to do and this is how my life's going to be better when I'm done. Now, one thing I want to say is there is a lot of people who, once they retire, within two years they go back to work because they haven't figured out how to enjoy the downtime that retirement brings. And I see this happen more prevalently with men than I do with women. And a lot of a man's identity is um, connected to what he has done for a living and what his job is. That happens with women, too, but th this seems to be a more prevalent theme with men. And so the one question that you can ask yourself that will help you figure out out what is next after retirement is if money were no object what would you spend your time doing you know if you didn't have to worry about paying for it or having enough money for it what would you spend your time doing and that will really isolate some of the things that you might want to schedule into your life once you do pull that retirement trigger and that all goes to helping you be more emotionally ready for retirement it's also a really, really good idea to talk about this with your spouse. <laughs> if you are married, then I can tell you it's probably true that your spouse has emotional concerns for you about your retirement and about how your retirement is going to change their own life. So these discussions between spouses are really important to have. Really important. And, and not necessarily that you have to have the exact same answer, but you have to figure out how you both can be happy with the, with the retirement that you're going to line up with. And, you know, we laugh about that, that you have to have the conversation with your spouse. But I did talk to somebody last week that said, I've never talked more than one minute about retirement with my spouse. We just keep working toward it. And I don't even know what that really looks like for us. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it, it is something that, you know, is potentially a hole out there that you want to make sure that you, you cover and discuss. So we had some clients come in not too long ago that are part of a farm family. And um, they the, the husband grew up on the farm. Then he took over the farm. He and his wife raised their kids on that farm. And, and I'm sure that listeners, especially in the Midwest, you all know families that are like this. Anyway, they had both kind of reached the point where, you know, they were in their mid-60s. And um, she had had a job in town working at the school. And he, you know, actively farmed. And she was ready to say, I think I'm done working in town. I really want to spend time with the grandkids. I'd like to just spend more time at home. 
But he wasn't ready to say, I'm, I'm going to hang up the whole farming operation and just cash rent out my land. And so we did some retirement planning and, and we really had to dig into that emotional piece and say, okay, well, she's ready. He's not. How do we set up this family so that this works really well for both of them? And ultimately, just by showing them what the different options that there were for them that they had left them feeling super, you know, set. She triggered her pension. She went ahead and retired. She's spending time, more time at home on the farm. She's helping him now with some stuff on the farm, which actually helps him out, taking care of some grandkids once in a while. And he is still farming and planning to do that for the next five or six years. And they're both happy and they're both at different points in their life, but they didn't have to do it at exactly the same time. And that's, that's why it's important to talk to your spouse about being emotionally ready for something like this. All right, duck number two. <laughs> All things health related. So you've probably heard us talk before about how important the health related things are in retirement. Not only is the Medicare system confusing, but health insurance until your Medicare age can be confusing and incredibly expensive. And then we have the whole issue of the fact that in retirement, health issues crop up that are part of retirement too. Not the insurance side of it, but just the health issue itself. You know, one of the things I like to ask people when we're planning with them is, what is the biggest health challenge that you're worried about? And it's all over the board. You know, Kelsey, you've had people whose parents have had cancer and, and passed away. You know, we've had people whose parents spent lots of time in nursing homes. And, and whatever your experience is, is generally what you fear. Yeah, definitely. And, and a lot of times if your parents are currently or have dealt with um, recently health issues, that seems to be what people think about the most. But um, the health, you know, the health is so important to think about based on the fact that things are just expensive. And you'll probably have to make some kind of change in your living arrangement, whether it's changing your current home to be able to allow you to live there longer, or moving into assisted living or nursing home and just kind of having an idea of what do you think and what would you like to, if in, you know, in an ideal world, what would you like to have happen? And just making sure you've thought through that and planned for that and that your um, retirement um, assets can help cover all of those things. So for sure, there's about three chunks of health care stuff that you have to pay attention to. There's health care up until you get ready for Medicare, which is at age 65. So you have to put in place a game plan of how you're going to cover your health insurance needs if you retire before you're 65. There's multiple ways to do it, but that's something you have to prepare for. You have to take the time to understand how the Medicare system works. There is a handful of moving parts to that. And so understanding it, taking time to learn about it is really valuable. Having someone who can help explain it to you is really important. We spend quite a bit of time at our retirement seminars talking about this and, and helping people understand it just so you know what you're up against, right? And then the last part of it is this nursing home kind of long-term chronic care. That's the third chunk. We all would like to stay home as long as possible, but if you get into a situation where your health requires care that can no longer be provided at your home, how do you want to handle that? And how are you going to pay for that? So those are those are the three kind of chunks of health-related things that are going to be important for you to strategize about as you're putting your retirement ducks in a row. And I think, uh, especially that long-term care piece, there are almost an infinite number of options in how you um, handle your later years and how you're cared right. for. I mean, there's so much more than there was um, when, you know, maybe your grandparents were needing this kind of care. So it, exploring those options and really understanding your choices will help you get a better idea. And I had to have this conversation with my dad because he swears he is not going into a nursing home. And I never told him <laughs> I would put him in one. But I also said, Dad, nursing homes have changed a lot since your grandmother was there. And, uh, you know, yeah. let's let's look at some choices here. And, and maybe it's, you know, like they already have made a lot of changes to their home to accommodate them as long as possible. But, uh, you know, I have to keep reminding him things have changed. Keep looking at the new options. The world evolves and let's see what's out. Congratulations to Mary Stirk and the team at Stirk Financial for earning a spot on two Forbes lists for six years running, including 2023 Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors and 2023 Forbes Top Women Wealth Advisors Best in State, number one in South Dakota.
Welcome back to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. And today we're talking about getting your retirement ducks in a row. So we've got five ducks that we're going to help you line up. And the first two that we've talked about already are emotional readiness and health-related issues. The next thing we're going to talk about is income planning. So there is a big difference between saving money for retirement and using that same money to create income for yourself during retirement. Mary, this is a big shift in your mindset. Huge shift. I cannot even tell you how many people really struggle to start spending the money that they saved up Mm -hmm. for this very moment. Right. (laughs) You feel like you're doing something wrong. You do. Because you do. You (laughs) for 30 something years, maybe longer, have saved money. And now it's like, I got to spend the money I've been saving. It's been this no, no for so long. I just, I literally just had this conversation last week with somebody. They're like, so I can still live off the money that I'm pulling in for income and I don't have to spend down my assets. And I'm like, technically, yeah, you don't have to, but like, that's what they're there for. Right. (laughs) So we might get to that point, but right now we're not there yet. And so it's just, it's very fascinating, this income planning. I think it is too. So the the piece of the duck to get in a row here is to look at the assets that you have and make a list of all of the different things that are in their current state able to create income for you. And if that's not going to be enough income for you, then the next step is to work with a financial planner to figure out how to translate the other assets you have into something that can create the right amount of income generation. There's a lot of moving pieces to this. So I do encourage you to work with somebody to help you with this. Um, There's, you know, you have to pay attention to liquidity. You have to pay attention to taxes, to um, charges might exist on certain things. Um, So there's, there's a lot of strategy that can go into the income planning that can really have strong long-term benefits. And there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to take assets out of your account. So work with somebody who knows everything about those assets that you have and can really help you strategize the exact way to do this. And and also know this is probably not a one and done meeting situation. This is probably going to be something you evaluate each year um, because you might pull assets from one, one uh, pull income from one asset one year and different um, asset a different year. And, and it, it might be very uh, fluid and, and moving. Or your uh, needs will shift, right? Your needs because are shift. Exactly. Some year you're going to need to, some years you'll have to buy a car and some years you won't have to. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the income planning. Now we have a great giveaway for this. We have something on our website called the Strategic Retirement Toolkit. And it's a grouping of tools that people can use. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're trying to figure this out yourself, we wanted to provide tools that will assist you. And if you're someone who wants to work with a planner, there are tools that you can use ahead of time to gather some information and kind of get your stuff ready to visit with a planner about. So come out to our website, sterkfinancialservices.com, and um, look at that strategic cool strategic toolkit or just request it through an email and we'll be happy to send it to you. Okay, so that was the third duck, getting your income planning figured out. The fourth duck to get in a row for retirement is your investments themselves. So um, most people who retire have a pool of investments. Not everyone, but most people do. And before you retire, this is the time to get those investments lined up in a way that makes sense. So when I'm talking about this as a uh, duck to get in a row for your investments, I mean that it's important to look at the performance. Are they performing in an above average manner or a below average manner? If you don't know how to figure that out, that's the time to get help. I'm also talking about your risk tolerance level, making sure that the assets and the investments you have are aligned with the amount of risk that you're comfortable taking as you enter into retirement. If you have set that up at one time and then kind of ignored it for a while, you are probably the victim of something called skew. And skew just means that At one time it was lined up, right? But now it's skewed (laughs) because things have changed and some things have done well and some things haven't. So it's no longer a a great asset allocation for yourself. So get your skew fixed before retirement and make sure that your investments are positioned in a way to be the most tax effective and um, aligned with the way that you want to spend money in retirement. Yeah, there's a lot that can be done here, and there's a lot that um, could be wrong in a portfolio or could be not not great in a portfolio. And once you pull that trigger and you retire, 
uh, you no longer are creating income to cover mistakes that might be in your portfolio. So I think one of the biggest things that can be done with a portfolio review is really risk falls under a risk management category uh-huh. of making sure you're not taking more risk than what you're comfortable with accidentally. Because sometimes that happens. You think you're a, a moderate aggressive portfolio, but through SKU and other things like that, you've drifted into aggressive or ultra aggressive even. And that is something that could have a very big impact on your portfolio in a bad market. Uh, also, you know, the risk of being in bad or poor performing funds. Um, you again, don't have the income coming in to fix that kind of thing. So making sure everything's lined up before you turn off your, uh, employment income is definitely recommended. So it was kind of interesting. I had some people in my office last month and, um, he was saying that he wanted to retire this coming spring and had me look at the 401k he had. And um, he had about 30% of the money in company stock. He works for a company that had company stock available. And the rest was all in stock mutual funds inside of his 401k. So I kind of looked at him. I said, do you understand that your 401k is incredibly aggressive because you're 100% in stocks? He's like, oh, you think I'm aggressive in there? I was like, Okay, so that it gives me pause when I hear that because it makes me realize that not everybody understands that having all of your money in the stock side of things and none of your money in the bond side of things equals being aggressive. And for someone who's going to retire in the spring, aggressive might not be the best you know, place to have your money. <laughs> Especially in the super volatile um, yeah. environment of the stock market right now. I mean, it's 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 just very volatile. It's not really predictable, obviously. We can't do that. But in a very volatile environment, having too much risk in your portfolio is a very scary thing. Right. And, and here's, the, here's the downside of the risk, right? If we have a market downturn two weeks before you're ready to retire and you're all in stocks – your retirement date might get pushed back a little bit because that's going to have a direct impact on how much money you have to support you through retirement. So that's why we want you to get this stuck in a row, right, is to get your investments lined up in a way that makes sense with the life that you're going to lead going forward. All right. So we've talked about four ducks so far, emotional readiness, health-related things, income planning and investments. And the last duck to get in a row is your legal documents. So you have probably, if you've been listening to this show, you've heard us say before that there is definitely some legal documents to make sure you have in place heading into retirement. Everybody should have a will. Unless you're totally okay with the state that you live in telling you how things are going to roll with your money when you die, you're going to want to have a will. (laughs) The next document that you want to have is a financial power of attorney. And that is who you're giving permission to take care of your money if you are no longer mentally capable to handle it yourself. Yeah, this is a big one because um, your uh, person that you want to handle things for you, if something were to happen to you, can't write a check from your checking account, can't get information on what your balance is at your bank account. We can't talk to them. Uh, This is, you know, in the world we live in today where there are those legal documents to provide that information. If you don't have that, then that could really stall out um, somebody trying to assist you financially uh, when the the need arises and it might put a burden on them that's unnecessary. So if you care about the people that are going to be caring for you, uh, (laughs) getting these documents in place is a really great gift that you can give them because they don't have to try to go get that information later when you are able to help them. Right. And then the last um, legal document to make sure that you have is a healthcare power of attorney or a healthcare directive. And it basically, it's, you know, saying pull the plug, don't pull the plug, but it's a little more broad than that because it's saying, here's, you know, how I want things to happen medically for myself if I'm not able to direct that myself. You know, maybe you're in a coma or maybe you're recovering from surgery or, or maybe you are sick for you know, an extended period of time and can't take care of yourself, the healthcare directive gives somebody the authority to help you with that. So those are the three main legal documents to have in place, the will, the financial power of attorney, and the healthcare power of attorney. And if you can get those three things into place, then that duck for your retirement 
getting that duck in a row is going to be something pretty easy to accomplish. Yeah. And we say do it now before you retire because there is some expense that's associated with this and there might be some additional additional estate planning that might be necessary for you um, prior to retirement. And paying that expense again while you still have money coming in just makes it easier for you to, to live in retirement um, and not have to pay that expense out of your, your new income that's uh, coming from your assets and your retirement incomes. So hopefully this has given you some good pearls of wisdom to think about as you're getting your own retirement ducks in a row. And uh, come out and get our strategic retirement toolkit so you can help yourself start to get organized with things. And uh, we'll see you next week. And next week we're going to be talking about how a new presidency might affect your money. Ooh, hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. Stirk Financial Services is celebrating 20 years in 2024. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of your audio provider and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can ensure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Osaic Wealth, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. Insurance offered through Sterk Financial Services, which is not affiliated with Osaic Wealth. Osaic Wealth is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Osaic Wealth. The rankings for the Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors list by Shook Research is based on due diligence meetings to evaluate each advisor qualitatively, a major component of a ranking algorithm that includes client retention, industry experience, review of compliance records, firm nominations, and quantitative criteria, including assets under management and review generated for their firms. The Forbes ranking of America's top women wealth advisors is based on an algorithm of qualitative and quantitative data, rating thousands of wealth advisors with a minimum of seven years of experience and weighing factors like revenue trends, assets under management, compliance records, industry experience, and best practices learned through telephone and in-person interviews. There is no fee in exchange for rankings. Forbes is a trademark of Forbes Media LLC. All rights reserved. Rankings and recognition from Forbes Shook Research are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a current or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance results and such rankings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor.